Namaste, Miranam, Professor Hey, Epsi Milker, Hushiwe. Uh, Tanya Vod for watching. Uh, Superpot, it's early here in the morning, and I have a video here. This is a guy who used to be the ex Raw chief, Vikram Sood, and he's going to give us a glimpse into the world of spies. Ultimately, in this game, you are alone. Does an agent know that he or she is alone? Yeah. Anything goes wrong in Pakistan, and the first thing is, Raw has done yes. this. That's, that's nice. I like it. You will never get to know good spies. I saw Ekta Tiger for fun. Was it fun? <laughs> it reminds me of James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> best thing was that um, our man got the ISI woman. Yes. That was the best thing. Has it ever happened that our man or our woman got the ISI of man or a woman? Yeah, I haven't heard of that. <laughs> These are all make-believe stories. So there's constant tussle, or at least in the mind of people, that ISI and Ro, they're constantly at each other's um, you know, heads and trying to outmaneuver the other. I think it's exaggerated. We don't, in the world of espionage, we don't gloat over the other man's failure. It's professional. I'm playing a game, I'm playing soccer with you, it's my goal, I scored it. You don't make enemies out of that. But you do make friends if yeah, you... make friends, yes. Yes? You do? It's, you know, after all, you find the uh, army generals of India and Pakistan quite chummy at times. Right. Uh, conflict of interest bhi hota hai Of course, conflict of interest bhi hota hai. How does one get over that then? Either you either break the relationship or you sidestep. Or you tell him, no more. Uh, this I won't do. But then anything goes wrong in Pakistan and the first thing is, Raw has done Yes, that's, that's nice. I like it. <laughs> part of the game, it's part of how you build perceptions. Mm -hmm. Part of how you want to portray the enemy. So I think a larger than life image is good. Works very well. Mm -hmm. We're very curious to know the kind of relationship that you have in a third country. Actually, it's quite a normal existence. If you, if you get to know he is, he is from the other agency, it's all right. We don't run away from each other. They don't wear a red shirt. Then how do you, how do you figure out? You know, if a man is seen at all functions, mm -hmm. wherever you go, same guy, he must be an intelligence operator. <laughs> in a country where you would otherwise not have access to certain certain information and recruiting people there, how does that work? It's all a game of fishing. You go out on fishing expeditions as it were. You know the area you want to cover. You know that we try and see who are the people who are working there. You find out their addresses. You do homework before that. All sorts of homework and you try and find out which is the club he visits, which is the bar he goes to. Where does he shop? So you do a lot of recce of a prospective target. It's not like buying Colgate toothpaste in a market or, or, or an L1 or L2 and then you say okay, lowest rate is the goodest, best rate. No, it doesn't work like that. You're going into hostile territory. You're working against the law of that country. You're going to suborn a good man to become a, a spy. He's scared. He has to have enough reasons to do that. Or you should have the ability to convince him that he has the reason. But, uh, you know, what, what kind of desperation would you, uh, you know, put on top of the list that if this person has gotten into trouble with A, B or C, then he or she would be more inclined to, to cooperate with you? Both kinds of people exist. One is the ideological person who will do anything for ideology. In the Cambridge Five were ideological spies. It's not as if this is the best one or that category is the best one, but usually the guy who is in need of money is easier to recruit. Right, as happened in the case of John Walker. Yes, John Walker was monetary. He was, he was greedy, he wanted money, he just wanted more money and he couldn't restrain himself and he showed off that money, so he got caught out. Right, but um, you know, uh, it's, it's like a double-edged sword because whichever side gives him a better deal, offers him a better deal, he would switch. That happens. It's, it's part of the game. Mm -hmm. um, many a time you find that the agent is working from this side and that side, both sides. For him, it's also survival. Can you sometimes pre preempt that a, that an agent or a spy is actually going to flip to the other side? It happens that you get to know feeling that uh, 
He's playing double with us. The questions he asks you sometimes, the replies he gives to your questions, he give you an idea that he's not playing level with us. And then you start feeding him. Mm -hmm. So that he goes and feeds them. It's only the rogue spies that we come to know of. We don't get to know of good spies. No, you will never get to know of good spies. We don't want to talk about them. We don't want to talk about our successes because these are all related to our neighborhood, essentially. So we unfortunately get known by our failures. Is this about perceptions and uh, how what people think is the reality of the world of espionage is actually not the reality. And is that your attempt to sort of set certain things straight once and for all? That is essentially the attempt to tell you how, tell the reader how the real world of espionage works. And it is not what we normally see in novels even or, or on the screen or on TV. In the mind of a reader or a viewer is this outlandish, very glamorous world where uh, a, a perfect spy can fly a plane like Daniel Craig, can run miles without breaking into sweat and you know he can kill, he can make love, he can you know order a martini. The world of espionage somewhat glamorous at least please don't tell me that it's not it would no, be heartbreaking there, there, there are there are glamorous moments <laughs> in life so also in espionage and there are moments of uh, solid truth editors pick the chiefs pick like the poster boys of the world of espionage Richard Zorge was one whose the name pronounced Richard Sorge he spied for the Germans he spied for the Soviets he spied for the Japanese and he was the man who told the told Stalin that Hitler is going to attack in June. Obviously, Philby ranks very high. It, it, that's a given. And uh, there was this spy in, in the, the Israeli spy Pollard. He was he was the naval spy. He was doing it against a friendly country. He was one of them. James Bond. Oh yeah, James Bond and uh, Gabriel Allen. Yeah. What about women in the agencies, the role that they play? Because in the fiction that we read, the femme fatales, and it's, it's very different from, from what that's, we that's have all, That's all make-believe. We have women officers who work like other officers, that's it. Don't have uh, agents running around. Uh, we have mostly men working for, and male agents. Right. But every once in a while we get to hear about reports how our officials, you know, from the army or uh, the bureaucracy, they get honey trapped by agents from the other side. Yeah, the other side may be using it. They may be using it or they, they first our men just get trapped and then they are used later. That was a really fun clip. I enjoyed that. That was good. That was good. It reminded me of my grandpa. My grandpa was uh, a spy. He worked for Interpol. Uh, he, he was based out of an American bank doing loans for Continental Bank, which is now BMO, I think. And uh, he actually brought the bank down. He found all kinds of corruption. It's a Penn Square deal. You can find it in the newspaper archives. And, uh, and he had all kinds of crazy stories that he would tell me when I was a little kid. He was constantly in the Middle East, in Asia, um, doing his work, South America. And he would come back and... Uh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool to hear the stories. Uh, that was good. Uh, Tanya Vad for watching. Um, Alvida, we'll see you next time. Pier Malingi. Hi, you're watching the Movie Community College channel on YouTube. Be sure to like it and subscribe. And to check out my music, go to JuddyRay.com. Thanks.